Hey guys, Andrew here. Today, back again with another top 10 list. This time featuring the water civilization. Now, when Jason and I were discussing our picks for the water civ, um, from our lists, we had 7 out of the 10 cards in common, which is in stark contrast to when we made our lists for light, where we only had 3 out of the 10 cards in common, which kind of made us think... Um, you know, there is a huge disparity in card quality in the Water Civ. On one hand, you have these game-defining cards that every deck will play, and on the other hand, there are, really, there are a lot of really, really bad Water cards, um, with kind of not much in between. Uh, that being said, the Water Civilization is, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, of, in terms of resource, resource management and generating huge tempo advantage with its unique bounce effects, mana retrieval, draw, and of course, more draw. You'd be hard-pressed to find an extremely good deck without the Water Civ. So without further ado, onto the list. The first entry onto our list may come to a surprise to no one. Um, of course, I'm talking about Presto Lancer. Oh, just by mentioning the name of the card um, reminds me of just how many games I've lost to this guy. Uh, with its classic can't be blocked effect, um, double breaker, and a whopping 8k power, he is the quintessential definition of a boss monster. In addition, he's also backed by a variety of cheap liquid people, such as Aquaguard, Aquahocus, which makes him actually quite easy to uh, get out. Um, and it's for these points that he makes it um, on the 10th spot of our list. Number 9 on my list might come to a surprise to some people. It's uh, Brain Serum. Uh, simple enough, draw two cards. Now this card in some ways is the inferior brother to another card that might be appearing on this list. Uh, Energy Stream, which does the same job for one less mana. However, the shield trigger isn't something to ignore. When, say, when aggro decks break into this, it might just help you draw into those vital board clears um, or get you closer to what you want. Imagine a zero mana energy stream. Transmogrify comes in clutch for the number 8 spot. Unfortunately, we don't have too much experience with this card since it is quite hard to incorporate into just any deck. You will have to build a deck around it. However, it rightfully deserves the spot on the list for its literal game-breaking effect, um, which allows you to bypass the requirement for mana. Um, when you do, say, um, hit that Bomedius or Twin Cannon or any other big creature, it really does feel like this card is um, broken. However, you also have to think about, you know, more than likely than not, um, you would also be hitting your Bronze Arm Tribes and Alcoholcuses, which in their own right isn't that bad at all, since you do get their um, play in effects. Uh, for example, Bronze Arm Tribe is a 3 mana Fairy Life, which might not be that bad. There's also the added effect of um, being able to use it on not only your own creatures, but your opponent's creatures as well. Um, which may be vital in, say, getting rid of a boss monster or a key blocker that's preventing you from attacking. Next on our list is Jason's favorite card. And actually, for the most part, um, this is kind of a sleeper pick. I remember back in the day, no one would play this. 
people kind of wrote it off thinking that it was either too hard to pull off or simply wasn't flashy enough. And oh boy, I can tell you right now that um, they were so wrong. I'm of course talking about Illusionary Merfolk, which draws you three cards. Um, that's crazy for such a cheaply costed card. You do have the slight drawback of requiring, uh, requiring a uh, Cyberlord in play, but given the must-include cards such as Emro and Coral, this factor doesn't really seem to cause too much of a problem. It's also a mini-boss um, at 4k, and I think Jason talked about how important um, mini-bosses can be. And that I mention three cards. Thrashcrawler comes in at number six. Initially, me and Jason had a debate on Thrashcrawler versus Flood Valve. I personally believe Thrashcrawler is a lot better than Flood Valve. And since I'm the one who gets to make the video, I get to choose. Sorry, not sorry, Jason. But Thrashcrawler, in my opinion, is why control decks work that well. Having access to your mana as a resource is amazing. It opens up more and more possibilities, which often the case will save you um, more times than not. It also helps with retrieving that natural sneered Bolmedius. But what breaks Thrashcrawler for me is that on top of its mana retrieval effect, himself is a great blocker with a great power to mana ratio at 4 mana 5k. Um, and this is particularly important in control decks where you're often down in shields. Thrashcrawler makes it really really hard for your opponent to land that finishing blow. The number 5 spot on our list goes to Emeril. Now Emeril has a really unique effect of being able to essentially cheat your shields. It makes your opponent kind of second guess about breaking too hastily, as an early Aqua Surfer or Burst Shot can easily swing the game. One benefit of running Emeril um, that is often overlooked is that you can run slightly less um, shield triggers in your list. Uh, think of Emerald as a shield trigger himself. Not to mention that it's also super cheap at 2 mana and serves a great bait for illusionary merfolk. <laughs> Number 4 goes to Aqua Surfer. Now this is in my opinion the best shield trigger in the TCG. It's the bane of all aggro and mid-range decks that want to break shields early, as it literally wins the game there and then when broken into early. Being at 2k is actually quite a big deal, since there are often scenarios where you find your opponent has a uh, Bronze Arm Tribe and a tapped Emerald. What you can do is then bounce back the Bronze Arm and then kill the tapped Emerald. Um, that just broke into your Aqua Surfer, and all of a sudden, now you've got board control. Even hard casting this guy for 6 mana isn't too bad, as he acts as a soft removal. Energy Stream comes in at number 3. And there's not much to be said about this card, uh, nearly every deck that runs water will run it. It generates a plus one for three mana, um, cycles your deck faster. Uh, it's a great top deck and of course water really does have the best draw cards in the game. The number 2 spot goes to what I think is the most hated card in the game. 
of course excluding a uh, certain someone, is of course uh, Korra. There is no worse feeling than getting a high-costed creature Korra. And in those cases, Korra literally reads, gain an extra turn. Since your opponent, who would be drawing into the Korra card, will mostly likely spend his next turn playing the same creature. I almost think that this effect is kind of quite toxic for the game, as it invalidates a lot of key strategies involving cards that don't have an immediate effect. Before we move on to our number one pick, we of course have some um, honorable mentions. So we've got Crystal Spin Slicer, Crystal Memory, Mincy Typhoon, Spirogate, and Flood Valve. And our number one pick. Um, surprises no one. Of course, there had to be Alcoholcus. He is hands down the best draw card in the game. I also previously mentioned how important being at 2k is, um, as opposed to 1k, since it prevents your opponent from attacking with um, 1k creatures early on. He's actually so broken that in the Japanese um, OCG, he was limited to 1 at one point, which goes to show you just how broken he actually is. Make sure to include Akahokas in all your water decks. Alright, so that wraps up our top 10 lists for water. Again, since this is our opinion, some of your favorite cards will be left out. So do leave a comment below um, on how you think we did. Um, you know, did we miss anything game breaking? And also, what are your um, top 10 picks for the Water Sieve? Anyway, Jason will be back next month with his top 10 darkness list. And just by having a quick sneak peek at what he has in store, um, some of the picks might surprise you. Anyway, this is Andrew, and you're watching the Gauntlet.